चल Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the meeting this morning of uh, FAPM, Final Performance Management, for people who don't know what it is. Um, if we move on to item one, apologies for absence. Uh, Councillor Arnu Almi, Councillor Morgan, Mrs Lisa Mullen and Mrs Sarah Watkins. Okay, thank you very much. Item two, then a declaration of interest. Members of the Fire and Rescue Authority remind you of the personal responsibility to declare both orally and in writing any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of matters contained in this agenda. In accordance with the provisions of the Local Government Act 2000, the Fire and Rescue Authority stand in order and the Member's Code of Conduct. Is anybody anything you'd like to declare? I know what it comes up. Yes. Yeah. The only thing I got is then he comes up and you win, which he normally does. <laughs> None? Nobody got anything? That's great. Um, I don't see then the chairperson's announcement. I haven't got anything as such for the moment. The only one thing I will say is I went to the Remembrance Day and we had the five cadets and they were exemplary. And, you know, I went with them, I had their photos taken with them. Unlucky for them. But, um, but yeah, they were very well presented and, and you know, I, could, I thank them for turning up. Yeah. Anybody else got anything to say about any remembrance? No, 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 that's fine. Um, <clears throat> item four then, to receive the minutes of the Finance Audit and Performance Management Committee held on 10th of October 2022, and that's on page five. <clears throat> so we go page by page, and then go to page five. Page six, page seven, page eight, and page nine. Anybody like to um, read anything before we the No, I'm just going to say I, I agree there. You should thank you for representing. Should we second that? I second it. Okay, thank you for that. Right, we then move on to item five, which is reports for decisions. This is a revenue monitoring report 2022 to 2023. That's on page 11. And who we got presenting that? Good. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. It's nice to meet you for the Thank first you. time. Thank you. And a different circumstances, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the second revenue monitoring report for the year and um, we're reporting on the changes to the forecast that was presented at the last meeting on October the 10th. There are a number of appendices to this report. You've got Appendix 1, which looks at the original budget, the actuals, forecast and variance analysis. Appendix 2 is the budget variances um, compared to each FAP end report. Uh, we've got Appendix 3, which is the year-end reserves position, and then Appendix 4 and 5 looks at the grant-funded initiatives. I've got some detail with the figures and some narrative there. So, in summary, we're, in, we're reporting that there's an increase of 297k on the overspend that was reported at the last meeting, which brings the total overspend to 1.232 million. Um, the majority of this um, this increase is, falls under the employee costs. So the difference in this report is that we've now um, got a firm position on the corporate pay award. So in, in the previous report, we had 5% pay award included. Um, now that the pay award's been confirmed, we've got a £1,925 increase. And so that's increased the forecast there. There is still a 5% pay when included for grey book staff, um, which will remain until obviously that that's in discussion currently, um, but that's that's what's in the figures for now. The report also takes into account the effect on the pension payment. So the previous report didn't include um, the increase in the pension payments that the pay awards were going to have, um, but they've been calculated since and that's not included in this, this forecast. So the employee 
costs there are based on the current establishment figures um, and those are the latest edition of the establishment figures are included in the report. So following on from the employment costs, we've got premises costs. There's a small increase of 13k in the end spend there. That just relates to the reduction in the telephone and communication costs. Moving on to training costs, there's an increase in the end spend. Um, although that is due to budget and training has been reallocated to other areas. So that last budget has just been moved. So supplies and services, overall there's a 72k increase in overspend. And there's a there's a few budget lines up in the supply and services area. Um, and overall they net after an increase of 72k. But some of the main reasons for that increase are um, there's 92k increase to ICT costs, uh, which is mainly buyers from other departments, um, and also um, I think it was a 53k increase for support and maintenance charges. There's a 41k increase for managed care costs, which is uniform for our auxiliary reserves, um, and a 25k increase on subscriptions. Uh, there's also under uh, supplies and services some overspend against external funding, which the detail is in um, appendix four and five. Um, and this is partly offset by a reduction in costs of 122k, um, which was um, insurance premiums, which were budgeted to increase by that 122k, but those haven't occurred, so there's a reduction in costs there. Uh, moving on to transport. There's an increase in underspend there of 26k. Um, that is uh, that nets off. Um, it's an increase in fuel charges, as we'd expect with the current plans of 29k. Um, and there's increase of, oh, there's a decrease in um, external funding costs of 58k. So netted off, that's a 26k increase in underspend. Contracted services then, there's a 75k increase in overspend um, and the main increase there is for 47k for external funding costs, which again, um, the details in appendix four and five, um, and small increase to our pension service level agreement with our CT of 12k. Uh, capital costs, uh, another small increase here of um, of twenty of twelve k, um, and that's that all ties back to the capital monitoring, which is the next item. There's been an increase um, to the forecast there, so that twelve k increase reflect, is reflected there. Um, then we've got income. So against that expenditure, we've got five hundred seventy k of additional income which has been um, firmed up since our last report. So there's 307k additional grant funding that's been last reported. And we've also um, calculated our bank interest to have uh, increased. This is because our uh, bank interest rate is tied with the Bank of England base rate. Um, so as that's gone up, our interest has gone up. So we're forecasting now um, to have 100 and. 76k of additional bank interest income uh, for this year. Um, so overall, then we've got the we're forecasting uh, 83 million pound forecast uh, for revenue, um, which is going to be covered by 79.3 million of local authority funding, 2.5 million of additional grant funding that's being secured. Um, which results in a £1.2 million overspend. Thank you very much for that. Anybody got any question? Steve, it's just, just, oh, worthwhile, well, okay. just, just worth, worthwhile reiterating. We'll, we'll be considering the budget report in due course, and a lot of the stuff that, that Jane has just been through in terms of the overspend position is anticipated, so we'll when we get to discuss the budget report, you'll see all that stuff flowing through into, into next year's budget as well, so I think that's, that's important to sort of record. We are expecting that overspend position, you know, it's not a surprise, it's it's something that we knew. Yeah, we knew. And, and we're planning for a, a means to fund it as well. 
um, part of the presentations we've been doing to the to the ten constituent councils is indicating that we will be funding whatever overspend occurs in the current year from reserves. So we're not passing any any of that overspend back to to the councils to expect them to fund. <coughs> Nobody got any questions? I got two. Um, <clears throat> on page 13 with the fuel, we'd estimate where this high, but as you know, the fuel prices are sort of come down. Will that, will that help us in some sort of uh, decrease? I know it's not much, but. And the other one I've got. Is it's on that one. See, uh, just picking up on the on the reader driving in this morning, whilst well, well, costs have been coming up slightly, they'd expect that they go back up. No, there's obviously. Yeah, there's. there's, there's Issues arising with the producing companies and the limit in production so that they can squeeze the price back up. Now, so uh, it's, it's a terrible price down here. Pontypridd, yeah. where I used to often come, used to be cheap. Then it's 165 for petrol. In Brecon Road in Abergavenny, it's 145. Mind, the rest of Abergavenny is about 148. But, uh, one in Brecon Road, they queue there, they queue there for hours and hours. And they, I go and get mine on Sunday night when I come back from Africa <laughs> with my daughter when there's nobody yeah. about. But, um, you know, they must be getting enough turnover to make it worthwhile to do it that cheap. They're coming from miles around. Obviously, we, we buy the majority of our fuel, there's bundles of stocks. Yes, yeah, stock so yes, it's, 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 a, it's a, on a contract anyway, so isn't it? We benefit from bulk buy in, but, uh, but still, you know, the, the cost of. So, really, it's just fluctuating when you've got a high. Then you got low, so you've got an even really, haven't you? And, and yeah. to remember, we're still proceeding with our electrification. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, that's why we'll that's that's why there were two parts of that question. I really yes. remember that. You're right. The other part is on page twenty-three where we got the apprentices. There's a decrease in underspend. Is there any particular reason for that? Are we are we having not so many apprentices coming onto the service, or is it or is it uh, with equipment or what? I don't know. We don't need. <laughs> it says against salary costs. So, yeah. So this, the, so the scheme, the scheme, the scheme here, we we basically brought in the apprenticeship scheme in order to assist with the funding of our yeah. our recruits. So effectively, it is a variable depending on how many recruits we've got going through at any point in time. Yeah. So effectively, we get funded for part of the apprenticeship costs towards the salary costs. So it does change depending on right. kind of throughput and other things. So it, it it is what it is, as they say, in terms of uh, yeah. in terms of the figure. Absolutely. I just want to make sure that yeah. perhaps we didn't have any more new apprentices. And uh, no, I think the intention is, Steve, that wherever possible, you know, that the people who are to go through an apprentice approved apprenticeship yeah. scheme, so that we can generate the income from that. Yeah. Anybody else want to ask any questions? Well, yeah. you know. well the recommendations of the Finance Order Performance Management Committee note and agree the report content. Are we all happy with that? That's great. Thanks very much. Thanks for that, Jim. Yeah. Uh, we now move on to item six, which is a capital monitoring report 2022 to 23 on page 27. That and it's Jen again, you know, mm -hmm. all of Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so again with the revenue report, this is the second capital monitoring report for the year. So we're looking at, um, we've provided a new forecast and we're looking at the changes. Um, in this forecast compared to the last forecast we brought to this meeting in October and we've worked on any big changes. So this report looks at forecast for as at the end of March and also includes any slippage um, which is funds going forward into next year which often happens with large capital schemes. The two append appendices included in this report so appendix one that illustrates the budget information it includes actual forecast slippage and, and draw overspend. Um, and there's also a, a table at the bottom which looks at how we're going to fund the capital expenditure. And then Appendix 2 details the grant funding initiatives that are included in the report. So overall, we're forecasting a total spend of 10.3 million uh, with slippage of 3.7 million. And that's against a budget of two million, um, which overall equates to a, a two point one million pound overspend. Although that is largely grant funded, which um, I'll, I'll cover in the rest of the report. So starting with property, we've got a two hundred and seventeen k decrease in the forecast. So we've got a budget of four point five million, 
Um, and so it's just 3.1 million here, and, and the main areas that have changed since the last report. Um, we've got Monmouth, um, so that's a co location project, which is which is going to be still ongoing, um, and therefore we're just now forecasting 50k uh, spend this year, which is just to be on fees, um, and the rest um, of the budget is slipped into next year. <coughs> We've got Whitchurch. Um, there's been there have been a delay on Whitchurch. Um, it's now due to finish before Christmas, hopefully. Um, um, but that has ended up with looking at a 73k increase in overspend there. Now that is a grant funded scheme, although there are discussions ongoing as to whether Welsh Government are able to fund that 73k overspend. So mm -hmm. for now. That is showing us an overspend until we get anything confirmed with funding. And then the so solar panelling project, um, that is on hold while we um, the site investigation is ongoing to find appropriate uh, roofs to use for those solar paneling. So um, that is mostly slipped into next year. We then got the vehicle replacement program. There's a small increase in the forecast here of 27k. So we've got the total budget of 4.5 million and slippage of 665k. Uh, for vans um, and estate cars, um, we placed an order for seven electric vans for this year, but we've had confirmation that the delivery is not going to happen until the next financial year. So therefore the budget has slipped, but they, they have been ordered. Uh, Non-operational four wheel drives, uh, that's another situation where the budget has slipped into next year. The suppliers order books um, are currently closed and we're waiting until they reopen and then we'll be placing an order. Although even if the order books open tomorrow, they still won't be delivered before the end of the year. Um, and then the dim electric vehicles, these are grant funded and we've now placed an order for two electric vans. The order has been placed for um, 101k for two vans um, and this is 26k higher than we previously reported and it's 26k higher than the grant funding that had initially been agreed, although we have had confirmation that that will also be covered uh, by grant funding. Moving on to operational equipment, there's a small increase here of 11k. Um, it's an overall budget of 1.4 million and a forecast expenditure of 1.4 million. Um, and that 11k increase is due to an order for six vehicle st stabilisation struts, which weren't included in the previous forecast, but everything against that budget has now been ordered and should be delivered before the end of the financial year. And then ICT equipment, there's just a small decrease of 1k here, um, and the overall overspend in ICT is due to a bit of loss. Um, that have changed since budget set in, largely due to uh, the dollar exchange rate. So overall, there's a table on page 30 which shows the funding um, and how and how our capital scheme is going to be funded this year. So overall, we've got overspends of 2.3 million, um, which are offset by underspends of 254k. 1.2 million of grant funding, which has been confirmed, um, and therefore that leaves 607k to be funded by the authority. Um, so yeah, overall we're looking at a forecast of 10.3 million. Excellent. Anybody got any questions? Do yep. I have to declare any interest because Monmouth was mentioned or not? Can do if you want to. Just to be on the safe side. <laughs> The only thing I was going to say, where we've ordered stuff, and we initially paid because sometimes they whack an additional cost on the next time we try and have them, whether it be vehicles or equipment. So I see, what did you say? Have we initially paid? Or? Yeah, you know when we say we order a vehicle and we're not going to get them until the next year? Yeah. If we sign the contract and paid up front, yeah. is it fixed? No, and they don't change. No, we don't. Uh, we don't pay for anything until until goods are received. Yeah, the reason I ask that because that 
when you come the next year, the way things have been running, there's going to be additional costs on what we uh, estimate for, the, for this year. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like, like all contracts, it, it depends mm -hmm. on the terms of the contract. Yeah. The, the, and it's a balance. I mean, you can go for fixed price contracts, obviously, which will fix the price. Yeah. The danger is with the volatility in pricing at the moment mm -hmm. is if you try and fix everything in a contract, you end up paying for risk. The contractor builds in everything yeah. that could possibly go wrong, mm. so you effectively guarantee mm. paying the highest possible price. Mm. So it is a balance, but I suspect with the vehicles that we order them at a at a figure, yeah. and, and there's probably little variation in that once they're underway. I think. I mean, if we share the procurement, yeah, we probably get a better deal in the long run. Yeah, it? it is. It is a balance, yeah. though. But um, you know, if, if we do now with every contract, imagine the additional costs we put on for the next stage. There's a question yeah. Councillor Hughes has uh, indicated. Yeah, want to come in with your question? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd just like to uh, pick up on the last sentence on uh, paragraph 1.5. It doesn't quite read uh, I, and uh, I, I can't quite make sense of it. So uh, perhaps if we can um, just revisit that and, and have an explanation and a couple of other queries then, Chair, on 2.1.4. Um, am I reading that the roofs at HQ and Barry are not are not suitable for solar panels or uh, otherwise? And just to pick up on a typo then, and a 2.2.2 that um, from the officer report, uh, verbal report, I take that, and it was being June 2023 and not 2022. Thanks. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, the the deliberate mistakes were well, like comes to hoops. <laughs> yeah, well, I think two, <laughs> two, two point one point four the solar panel. And you, you, yeah, you are correct that the the roofs on the headquarters in Bali are not suitable. So there's a, a typo there. And similarly with the two point two point two, the delivery date will be June twenty three. So that's correct. Mm -hmm. and the other one comes to hoops was paragraph one point five, was it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's it's the final sentence. Um, Geraint, I uh, couldn't quite uh, make out what what the um, the meaning was on that one. So I, I, I suspect it's just inelegantly worded, Councillor Hughes. I think what it what, what it's trying to say is that basically we don't we don't get a specific capital funding settlement from Welsh government or or anybody else. Um, so effectively, when we when we do when we do capital activities, most of it is from from our own borrowing. And therefore, borrowing is the main driver to the to the capital financing costs of the of the service. And I think that's it, that's what it's trying to say in essence, but it's slightly inelegantly worded. So we'll look at that in future to to ensure that if that paragraph does repeat, <laughs> it, it says something slightly different. <laughs> uh, that, that that's fine. Thank you. Are you all right with that? Yeah. Um, my first two have just been answered. Thank you. Um, but on two point two point four. Uh, we're ordering two dim vehicles. Why are we going to two from one? Or is it is it normally two vehicles? And I know I said it's been offended by the box lorries for Midden West. But I thought traditionally we only had the one dim vehicle. Couldn't answer off the top off the no. top of our head. Well, that, that we, we can we, we can ask Chris. There must be some yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. I've just wondered the reason. Perhaps we could find out on there. Oh, yeah. 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 Probably a dim driver, but I don't know what. As I said, I don't know if it's an enhanced requirement, or, but it's certainly you know, it's been funded and, and agreed by Welsh government, yeah. but. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely find out. I, I didn't know if it was down to the vehicle size because they're going to electric with them being smaller vehicles and not having yeah. the capacity for the, the same amount of equipment on them. <clears throat> Corporate knowledge comes in handy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> As you know, the, the electric vehicles are not on a par yet where the no. No, no, so, uh, unfortunately, but as you know, you see by the funding, they usually double the price. Yeah. yeah. Chairman, can I say yeah, they, yeah. if they weren't as big and wouldn't take as much equipment, then you'd be lacking that equipment when you got to the fire, so it wouldn't be any gain, would it, really? No, it's a knock-off effect. Yeah. 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 
Anybody else want to raise anything on report for, for Jen? She's done really well this morning. Come and release that. No? No, thank you. The recommendations that members look the budget and progress of capital schemes. A few of the, few of the alterations identified in Appendix 1 and associated movements in funding. Now, perhaps Councillor Yu was picking up on the grammar. Excellent. <laughs> there we are. Then. The recommendation moved and seconded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seconded, yeah. Sorry, I'm involved with me. Right. Um, the next one is item seven revenue and capital budget setting and update report, page 37. And Chris is leading on this one. And I'll go wing on the Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so this report is the, the, the next budget report in a sequence you're having. Um, essentially, it builds on the, the last set of reports, which was regarding the medium term financial strategy. Um, members will recall when you last saw this report, we were um, projecting a 10.6% increase in our budget for next year. Uh, what this report does is pick up essentially all the changes that have happened since then, uh, some as a result of external influences and others as a result of actions that you requested the authority to undertake uh, in its work. Um, so I'll go, I'll go through kind of each of the main chunks of, 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 of things that have changed really in terms of the, the external environment. Um, the, the first is that, that you recall I indicated that Welsh Government would be increasing their, their budget and therefore local authority budgets by around three and a half percent next year. Um, the, the only thing really that's changed on that is the, the Chancellor obviously in his autumn statement indicated there would be some additional spending nationally on a, on a number of initiatives and some of those initiatives will affect local authorities but they were mainly around schools and adult social care. So we are likely to see increased money coming down the M4 to Welsh Government and it is likely, and I say likely because I'm not in control of this process, it is likely that Welsh Government will therefore passport some of that money into local authorities to, to assist with funding, education and social care. So we may well see the headline for local councils go up above that 3.5%, but clearly it comes with spending commitments as well, so that money would have to in turn be spent on, on those services by council. But it doesn't, whilst the numbers may change, it doesn't really increase the funding available to to local authorities. So that's the sort of main thing about the, the macro position, if you like, for, for public funding, public services funding within Wales. Um, the other thing I just want to reiterate really in terms of Welsh Government uh, funding to fire and rescue services, the, the Welsh Government do provide us with grant towards a number of our services and, and Jen in the, in the revenue budget report has touched on some of those. The indication is that our, our grant settlements for next year will be cash flat they won't be increased by inflation. They never have been. They always tend to come in at exactly the same figure. Now, in the past, of course, inflation's only been running at 1 and 2 percent, so it's not really been an issue. Yes, we've had to make efficiencies in the way we deliver those services. But if costs are running at 10, 11, 12 percent higher next year, that will represent quite a significant cut in the overall resources available to fund those services. Uh, so it's important to recognise the fire authority is going to have to cut its cloth accordingly. You know, we might have to change slightly the way we do things. We obviously won't withdraw from funding um, these services. They're important to the fire authority, but we will need to look at how we provide them to make sure we can step within those, those grant envelopes. Uh, the third area then, which is on uh, particularly on page 40 for members, um, is the population figures. Uh, members will re recall that the, the basis on which we distribute the fire contributions budget to our 10 constituent authorities is on population. And every year these population numbers change. Uh, and this has happened again, no surprise. So what I've done is included in 2.4.2 of the report a table there, which shows the effect of the population changes for the coming year 23-24. So what you've got on that table is the, the, the budget, the, the current year's budget, 79.3 million, distributed across the, the, the 10 constituent councils. The population numbers for 22-3 for the current year, 1.554 million. The population for 23-24, which is marginally <coughs> down at 1.541 million. So overall, the population has dropped by 0.82 of a percent. But obviously that changes across the 10 constituent authorities. It has a differential effect. And you'll see that essentially um, 
the, the outlier really is Newport, which has a significant increase in its population, whereas everybody else is, is kind of broadly around the average or below. Um, and the result of that is before any decision on the budget next year, what will happen is we will see Newport pay a, a substantial increase in its contributions budget um, relative to the others. Um, Bridging and, and Cardiff do see a small increase, all the other authorities see a reduction. So that's before any budget decision, and that's that's not within the control of the fire authority. Um, that's as a result of the, the statutory basis on which we're funded. Yeah. So that's the starting point, really, for, the, for for setting the budget for next year. There will be that change embedded in the in the system. So then we go on to actually discuss uh, what's changed in terms of the budget. Now, following the discussions we had both in this committee, fire authority, and in, in the scrutiny group. Um, there, there were several pieces of work undertaken, and I'm just going to highlight the results of those. Um, on paragraph 2.5.7 of the report, on page 41, you'll see that there have been a number of changes uh, on the employees' budget. Um, and, I, and I'll just run through them just so some members can understand what they are. The first is the is a national insurance employer's cost reduction. That came out of the mini budget. You don't even know, all remember the mini budget and what fun that was now in mm -hmm. terms of, of things being agreed and then unagreed. Um, mostly everything was unagreed as a result of the of the reversal on the mini budget. But the one thing that wasn't was the reduction in national insurance contributions. So that will reduce the authority's budget by just under half a million pounds next year. Um, Ken's already mentioned that the uh, Green Book Pay Award being settled for the current year. Now, when we did the, the budget, we actually assumed slightly higher figures than the budget monitoring. So overall, there's actually a small reduction in the uh, in, in the Green Book support costs to the authority as a result of that, that settlement. Um, as, a, as a result of the discussion in FAPM and, and the scrutiny group, we did a detailed reassessment of all pay estimates and provisions. So that involved a post-by-post -post review of everything the authority is doing and, and what we could essentially uh, adequately provide for and what we could remove from those assessments. And overall, that piece of work has, has, has reduced the budget by £200,000. So that was a worthwhile exercise. Um, the, the other aspect we've looked at is an inclusion of vacancy provisions across the service. Now, this is where, um, obviously, we budget on the basis we've got a full complement of staff. And you, you never got a full complement of staff. People will always be leaving the authority, retiring for whatever reason. And therefore, there will always be vacancies. So with, with the with the senior management team, we've sort of looked at the, the areas across the, the service. And we've basically assumed another just shy of half a million pounds worth of savings we can make by making sure that we, we account for those vacancies if, if and when they occur. And they will occur. Yeah. The one thing I would say about that, part of that provision is in relation to on-call staff. Um, and I'm sure you'll all be familiar with the, the, the on-call um, challenges that exist both within this authority and across Wales, of course, given recent uh, news coverage around Mid and West. Um, what, what we are not saying there is we are actively looking to keep posts vacant. I think that's critical to say. As a service, we are still pushing on with our on-call initiatives to try and ensure that we get the cover that we need across all of our stations. And that piece of work will continue to try and ensure that we employ as many people to fill those contracts. But at the same time, we have to be realistic and say the chances of us actually getting to 100% next year are probably slim. So what this budget provision represents is a, is a realistic assessment of, of where we think we might get to. So hence, we can build in a further saving in respect of, of that provision. Um, and the, the last two on that list really are, are about uh, alternative funding mechanisms. The job evaluation process, members will be familiar with that. We, we finished our job evaluation process in terms of reviewing our support staff. Um, love, well, earlier this year, I think it completed. Um, and as a result of that, there were some protection costs built in for people who, whose grades had reduced. Uh, and that represents an ongoing cost for a number of years while, while that protection runs out. And what we're intending to do is rather than budget for that as an ongoing cost, we're actually going to meet it from reserves. So effectively, we don't have to increase the budget next year in respect of those costs. Um, and similarly, there are a number of posts that the fire authority has agreed, which are of a temporary nature, 
which again, we could build into the base budget, but we know these posts are going to fall out in, of the budget in a couple of years' time. So rather than build them in and, and cause a sort of lump in the budget, if you like, which local authorities have to fund, what we're intending is that we would meet those costs from reserves to keep that flat line on the on the core budget and not ask the uh, the authorities to actually fund that temporary blip in costs, if you like. And that represents around quarter of a million pounds Again, it, it's um, examples of the sorts of posts that are in there. If you recall, we we decided there was it was necessary to bolster our property work, our property maintenance work, and our property refurbishments. So we've employed a couple of people within the property team to actually help with that work. They're temporary posts; they come in and they will leave again as and when that work is completed. So it's those sort of posts that we're talking about. Um, so they will come out. So there's quite a significant uh, piece of work there we've done to actually reduce the employees' budget. Um, for next year. Well, I'd be very ignorant. Yeah. What's Green Book pay? Sorry, Green Book is the support staff as opposed to the uniformed oh, operational yeah. staff. Sorry. Um, so the Green Book is the support staff, yeah. Green Book is uh, and Gold Book are the uniformed uh, staff of the authority. <laughs> Um, the, the next area was on uh, 2.5.11, uh, and this was uh, in relation to equipment budgets. Um, each year what we do is we go out to, to, to the different service areas and we ask them to put together their um, bids and submissions around uh, equipment they need. Um, and these, these two particular pieces of work are around the ICT budget and the operational equipment budget for firefighters and firefighting. Um, uh, and what we had in were, were um, bids for specific pieces of equipment for next year. Now, by its nature, these, these sort of bids are lumpy. You know, you get years where there are lots of requirements for re equipment replacement and then there are other years when it's a bit lighter and it, and it goes down again and, and if we respond to each of these bids by sort of moving the budget we get that kind of zigzag of a budget so some, some years it goes up high some years it comes down low what we're recommending is we actually take these items of equipment out of the revenue budget and actually fund them from reserves now it's, it's going to take the next 12 months we think for a piece of work to be done to actually look at how we fund that from reserves over a longer longer period mm -hmm. so we're going to come up with a sustainable replacement plan so these equipment replacements are going to happen we're not going to stop them but what we're looking to do is actually fund them via reserve so we can level out the budget provision so there's a stable and an ongoing budget provision which is adequate to meet the peaks when they're necessary but also sort of make savings when there's a when there's a reduction in requirements so again it's, it's not a it's not a suggestion that we're not going to do these things. It's just a different way of funding them to try and iron out those those peaks and troughs in the budget. And as a result of that, we think we can take out the uh, the two items there that you see specified. So that's another sort of three hundred thousand pounds worth of savings. And the, and the last area which um, we looked at was was the capital financing budget, which is two five fourteen in in the report. Jen's already uh, touched on this in the revenue budget and monitoring report as well, and I'll come on to it in the treasury management report next. Our, we've always got cash in the bank, um, in our various bank accounts, um, and because our bank accounts of interest rates are based on the Bank of England base rate, as interest rates in the economy have been going up through the, the last couple of months, um, so our interest on those accounts has been going up as well. So Jen indicated we'll see an increase in, in, in the, uh, the income in the current year, by the time we get the next year, we think that's going to net us another two hundred and fifty one thousand pounds. So we're building that in as a base budget assumption as additional income for the service, which obviously reduces our running costs going forward. Um, I think the question was asked in a previous meeting, um, well, what will happen if interest rates go down the other, and the other way? Well, the simple answer is that will fall away and we will need to, to sort of deal with that as and when it happens. But it's a it's a, a realistic assessment of what our income will be for next year. So it's a re reasonable thing to build into the uh, the budget for the coming financial year. So the overall effect of that, if, we, if you go to paragraph uh, four of the report on page 44, um, what we show there is that whereas we were at 10.6% for next financial year, 23-24, we're now looking at something around 8.2%. So it's reduced by about 2.5%. It equates to just under two million pounds worth of reductions that we've identified um, together with yourselves as, as, as the various committees and groups. Um, and therefore, there will be a reduction in the ask from local authorities to that which was indicated in our medium term financial strategy. And what I've set out in, in paragraph 4.2 there in the table, together with those population changes that I mentioned earlier, the average 8.19 is the exact figure is in terms of the uh, the ask. 
it will vary across the councils and you can see in that table what the ask is from each of the councils based on those population changes so you'll see there that i mentioned newport's population had gone up so the ask from newport will still be around the 10 percent mark just under 10 percent so they've seen a reduction but not as much as as, as everybody else and you'll see at the other end of the scale by gwent which is the the, the, the most reduction in population, you'll see that the ask from them is, is just under 7%. So there's a variance because of those population changes. Um, but everybody sees a reduction from the, the last report that you saw. Um, so the committee has been asked to recommend that budget to the fire authority uh, at its meeting in December. Um, and that will form the basis of the consultation with the 10 local authorities um, between then and February when the, the, the next meeting to consider the budget takes place. And I'll stop talking at that point, Jay. Any questions? There's probably a few. Uh, no, <laughs> no I, I only have one question. And again, thank you for, you know, it is all explained very well. Um, on 2.5.7, um, the, the vacancy provisions, I know you said that we're looking to maintain the the retained or the on-call, I'm trying to pick the terminology, oh, sorry. And, and I know this committee is, is the primary, primary thing is balancing the budgets and trying to help you do the next ones. Well, um, we were quite under establishment on the on the on-call stuff. Yeah. And we seem to be recruiting a lot of our whole time staff now from the on-call establishment mm. so aren't we reducing the on-call establishment further <laughs> by taking people out of that? That, that that inevitably is a consequence of that action yes but yeah. i think part of the work of the on-call group is to also recruit to backfill that yeah. and more um, but I'm, I, I'm well you know councillor but yeah. i'm sure the situation and it was it became apparent with the discussion around mid and west on the news the other day that the challenges of recruiting people are significant yeah um, but they don't stop is the message you know yeah. we, we will continue um and i think the on-call group has been looking at various solutions to, to that in terms of changing the package on offer um, yeah. to, to make it more attractive but inevitably there are challenges and i think all this does is recognize that challenge it doesn't it doesn't say stop it doesn't say stop recruiting yeah. doesn't say don't don't make any big effort um and we can certainly go a long way towards bolstering the on call without even getting the uh, this yeah. assumption so i yeah. think you know that 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 challenge remains and the, and the solution also is there to be taken it doesn't it doesn't stop that happening yeah i know it's not going to start my fear was with the in the on call it's, establishment it's, that, some of some of them obviously the duration of the you know, the the recruits course the 13 weeks they're on the course you know, they, they haven't got the availability then but once they're out of the station all the time they do maintain their commitment yeah. to their on call provision but, as well so not but, all of them but yeah. some of them to uh, find a large majority to come yeah. back and stay with us yeah, and it's dropping percentages, Chris. Yeah. And they, you know, they, mm. when you when you have got a full time job, it's hard to give a hundred percent cover for the on call. And it's it, it was just something that I I was mindful of only because I I know a little bit of bit of how it works. And yeah. you've answered my question. Yeah, you. I mean, and to be fair, Councillor Buckley, the, the challenge was 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 you know fed back in the same way from, from the operational officers when we had this discussion you know it was a case of well we can't stop recruiting in order to make savings and that's yeah. not the intention yeah. here I, I need to emphasize that you know yeah for it's straight as a treasurer i have to emphasize it but i do have to emphasize it because it's important that as a service we we recognize what we're trying to achieve yeah. and, and what we're trying to achieve is a higher on call and it's, um, yeah, employment. it's, it's really it's very pleasing to hear that and it's um, mm -hmm. just checking thank you really? Councillor Isaac, do you want to ask a question? Yes, thank you. Um, in some uh, cases, we are in the local authority being told to accept the tsunami of cuts before long. What would be the lowest percentage rate that the fire service would be looking for from local authorities with that scenario? Thanks. So so, Councillor Isaac, the, the figures in 4.2 are what's being recommended to the to the, the fire authority. So, the, what you're looking at there is a range from seven to ten percent in terms of the numbers on that schedule. Um, I appreciate that 
obviously local authorities may well be getting a lesser settlement from Welsh Government next year than that figure. Um, I, would, I, I would say a couple of things in response to that. The first is, of course, um, local authorities have council tax at their, at their um, fingertips if they, sh if they should want to raise more money. I know it's a pro probably a politically um, difficult situation to be talking about that with cost of living increases, but that is there for local authorities to consider. Um, that, that, that's an important point to, to recall. The other thing to recall is that in the current financial year, local authorities had a 10% increase in their resources from Welsh Government and the fire authority only asked for a 2.29% increase in its fire levy in the current year. And when we when we set that as a, a budget back in February 2022, um, we did we did specifically state that we'd effectively artificially held that down because of the situation on our pay pay budget provisions in in the previous year. So we sort of did give a warning um, when we when we asked for the 2.29 that this year's increase would be higher. As a result of that, we effectively suppress the requirement for them to pay us money, uh, and they would need to be a catch-up exercise on that. So, it's it, the information is out there. I mean, clearly the numbers weren't as high as this because I think none of us anticipated the sort of pay awards that we were looking at um, in the system. Um, so, yeah, it, it is unfortunately it's between seven and ten percent is is the ask, um, and I appreciate that's not um, going to be good news to to local authority colleagues. I would stress again that we probably of the three authorities in Wales are going to be at the lower end of the figures as well. Um, this this is not at the higher end of what fire authorities are asking for. Yeah. Are yeah, you, thanks. Are you happy with that? Yeah. yeah, thanks very much. As I say, um, obviously, um, my uh, area being one of the, well, almost is the smallest area in Wales, we find a larger amount quite difficult to find, but um, we'll get to that when we get to it. Thanks. Yeah, we are, Councillor David, just to remind you as well, we are we are um, visiting all 10 authorities. Uh, we've, done, we've done four, I think, before this information has come to the committee today. The ones that we're visiting now, we're updating the information for them along the lines of this report. So we are sort of spelling out what the 10.6% was originally, what's been done to get down to the 82 um, and I'm sure there will be some discussions and challenging um, questions and meetings with us over the time. We are, in fact, due to meet on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday, Steve? Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. We're due to meet with Tor Vine, the leader of Tor Vine, um, who is actually the WLGA spokesman on finance for Wales. So I'm sure there will be some questions there regarding this as well. And unfortunately, okay, thanks. A lot of the predictions we've had to make will have, have, have been unknowns. You know, it, it's very, very difficult to make judgment on something we don't really know for yeah. certain. So, yeah. So, sorry, uh, Councillor David, the one thing I, I meant to add to that as well, which I which I should have added, is that I have shared all these figures with the 10 treasurers of the local authorities as well, so they are fully aware of and cited on this information. That's excellent, because that was, that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else got anything to raise with Chris? You know, he's always very good. He's very on the ball. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Um, the recommendations we go with that, and then we'll send it yes. in. Uh, the members note the continued risk and uncertainties within the proposed draft revenue budget, and re recommend it to the fire authority as the basis of consultation. For some like a second. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, right, we go for the next one on item 8, which is a report for information from now. Treasury Management Midterm re Review Report 2022 to 23, and that's on page 51. And that's Chris again. Thank you, for the Chair, thank you very much. Um, I don't propose to take members through the whole of this report, Chair, because you've seen many of these Treasury Management mm -hmm. uh, updates re reports before. Um, probably the, the key part of the report is the narrative update in paragraph 3.3 .3 on page 54. Um, and that sets out the, really the key messages. Um, the first is there's no major changes to the strategy. Um, so, so we continue with the same strategies in terms of our Treasury Management. Uh, we, we did estimate during the year that we might require the, um, to borrow. Um, there's, there's no kind of worrying messages in that. You know, we, we borrow from time to time. It's part of life. Um, we did indicate that there might be some short-term cash uh, 
pinches, shall we say, within our within our cash flow, um, and we're doing all we can to actually avoid that situation. So wherever possible, we avoid the need to borrow, um, and we try and use our cash resources instead. And that's still the ongoing strategy. Um, in terms of all the other indicators around our um, capital finance requirement um, and, and all our other treasury management indicators, we are happy that we will stay within them. So there's no, again, no no particular messages I need to give you around that. And just to reiterate again, um, within this report, we've seen um, bank interest earned of, of over 90K up to a half year point. And as per the, the monitoring report Jen mentioned earlier, we, we expect to see that double by the end of the year. So we're seeing that interest um, cut, coming up slowly as a, as a result of the bank uh, base rate increases. So that's really all I wanted to say on that report, Chair. It is only the midterm sort of review. Yeah. Any questions from Chris on that? Is there any restriction in the amount of borrowing, particularly with a percentage rate? We, we, we set our own restrictions on our borrowing limits. Um, Steve, that's part of the Treasury management indicators. Yeah. So we set those at the beginning of the year so, so you know, nobody gets gets a bit between their teeth and goes off and borrows something ridiculous that we didn't want them to do. Um, so those restrictions are in there. Um, I, I usually mention this as part of the, the, the various discussions on Treasury management. When, when we are borrowing, what, what we do is we don't borrow in response to capital spending. We borrow in accordance with the strategy. So that's a long-term borrowing strategy. And what we try and do is ensure that our loans are maturing at a, at a range of dates over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And what that means is we insulate ourselves against short-term fluctuations in interest rates. So, you know, we, we don't get caught having to borrow all of our borrowing when interest rates are high. Yeah. And equally, you know, as interest rates come down, we try and replace borrowing at lower rates, and then we, we kind of work on that basis. Yeah. So what we will see is if you look at our debt portfolio, you'll find we have debt and borrowing falling out at various stages along the way. Mm -hmm. Just good treasury management to insulate yourselves from that short-term sharp shocks in the economy. The old, the old um, here's a phrase from the past, no more boom and bust. <laughs> so it's, it's about trying to keep everything on a level playing field um, so, that, so that we don't get called out at any point in time in terms of our borrowing strategy. Mm. So um, I think that page, uh, yeah, because the way the situation has been the last couple of years, I think we'd be up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and if you look at the forecast that we're, we're seeing from our Treasury management, we're seeing it, bank base rates obviously have been on, on an upturn now for the last couple of months. They've been going up in response to, to controlling inflation. Um, we don't see that as a long-term trend. We see that kind of tailing off over a period as the economy comes under control and inflation starts to fall again. We expect the base rate to come off and start to reduce again yeah. back to what the Bank of England's expectations are and long-term rates of interest. So yeah, that's that's where you don't you don't respond by knee-jerk reactions to these things um, in the economy. It's, it's, it's a dangerous it's a game. Term, yeah. You essentially end up gambling rather than having yeah. a treasury management strategy. So that's what we don't do. Yeah. We did a silly thing. I know how many years ago now. We didn't take um, we didn't take the rise. I'm not sorry. It's left it. You know, and nobody noticed. The public never noticed. And of course, when we did have to catch up, we had to go a bit oh, yeah. a bit higher. You know, <laughs> then they then they noticed. So we haven't made that mistake again. It wasn't mentioned this time, and somebody <laughs> said, "No, we're not going there again." Because it, yeah. it comes back on you after you see. Yeah, you know, yeah. The next time you go up, you want to go so much bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can always catch up and bite you. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to read or? Well, the recommendation, like I said, these are reports of information that the finance audit and performance management members note the report and treasury activities for the period. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. That's great. Thank you for that. Right. So the next one is um, item 9, the audit actions report, health check 2022 to 2023, quarter 2, page 61. Wayne Thomas is on late. Hello everyone, can everyone hear me? Yeah, Paul. Okay, brilliant. Uh, yeah, thank you for, for inviting me uh, this morning. I'm here to provide a brief overview of the audit actions report, so it's the uh, health check for, for quarter two. Uh, I'm not going to go into excessive detail about the report, but I'm just going to give a very uh, brief uh, overarching summary of, of what's in there. 
So, uh, members will see the page 63 as a, an over, overall um, summary of what's in the report. Um, and I think it's important to note what, what we tend to have in the report is um, every audit uh, or um, circular or peer review we undertake or we're subjected to as a, as a service, there tends to be a, a set of recommendations or audit actions that fall out of them. And this report is a summary of all of those actions um, that have come out at some point that we're working on uh, to try and to try and achieve to obviously try and um, yeah basically to try and finalise those audits uh, to ensure that we are performing at the the required standard. Um, you've got some reports you have from us quite regularly now. Uh, all these audit actions are within our business management information system, and that's that can ensure that every audit action has an owner. Um, we can monitor the progress against each of these audit actions as well. I mean, some of them are longer term, so it's important that we, we have them in this system. So on a quarterly basis, we can collect uh, some ongoing progress reports. Again, if they're, if they're long term, sometimes there's a risk they're forgotten about. But at this point, uh, people are given a steer on a quarterly basis to provide a, an update. That's red, amber, green. Is it going to progress? Uh, and a bit of narrative then for members. And also uh, what it does allow us to do um, and the, the performance planning and risk team that I oversee can actually use some of these audit actions uh, and put them within business improvement plans or, or other uh, risk mitigation uh, factors as well. So these some of these audit actions uh, can also contribute to the business in terms of improving it and they can also help us mitigate other risks we hold in the system. So. Um, this mechanism of, of recording audit actions um, can, really, can really be a good way of us monitoring what we are doing as a service, both in terms of completing these audits uh, and also improving the business. Uh, page 64 then provides a very brief overview of the 20 audits we have currently where there are outstanding audit actions, uh, just in, in tabular form. And page 65 has some, uh, some, some scorecards um, so we have 17 ongoing actions at the moment. Again, just to give you an overview of how they're progressing, uh, and seven that are overdue actions. So they're actions that, at the audit, were given target dates that are that, but the audits are still ongoing past their target date. So uh, in terms of those actions, they're going to be managed at local level to to, to try and determine whether uh, we need to accelerate how they're doing or whether actually the the uh, date provided at the audit was possibly a little bit uh, ambitious. Um, page 66 there through to 79 uh, are some of those narratives. So the report tends to drill down in, in detail the further on it goes. Um, and what you'll see there is the final summaries of any of those uh, actions that were cancelled or completed during quarter two. Uh, we then have some narratives around those seven I discussed that were overdue. And again, how they're progressing against uh, the, the, the target date uh, even though they have certainly gone past the target date. And then we have the narratives around the 17 um, out ongoing actions that are within within scope or within date, sorry. Uh, you'll notice obviously there's 13 pages worth uh, the majority of, of the ongoing actions we have from audits tend to be as a result of the internal audits that, um, that we have through TIAA. Uh, so again, it's uh, hopefully gives members a bit of um, assurance that we are um, under, undertaking quite a rigorous internal audit programme. We are looking to, to, um, to improve. We are looking for these actions and then we are committing to them with responsible managers. Uh, and finally, there is uh, one page just to give a similar summary um, from an action that arose from a, an external audit. Uh, so again, I'm hoping that the audit actions themselves are, are, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, and again, you will see that there is a, a manager responsible for each one. Um, there is a, you know, a completion date. Uh, there is a, a red, amber, green status in terms of how, how that's progressing towards um, the target. Um, and obviously then the target the target date itself. So I don't think I'll go into every every action individually, but I hope that does give members a, a slight overview of, of the, the type of things that do arise from our audits. Uh, and just a bit of assurance then that they are being monitored on an ongoing basis. Are you ready for any questions? If it, can you take any or? Yeah. Yes. Councillor Hughes, do you want to go first? Sorry, Steve, I didn't see you till after. 
Thank you, Chair. It, it's um, just picked up. There's several red flags on the issue of safeguarding, and of course, that's been um, you know a major national topic, isn't it, of, of late, and uh, certainly affecting one or two other authorities. Um, what I'm pleased to note is that it's been picked up and it's been dealt with under internal audit, but uh, I don't think we you know we should understate the importance of. Uh, this area um, to to the authority. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I had a question waiting. Um, <laughs> they got a, a start date, but when are we looking to, to complete it? Because as you, as, as you said previously, it's a very important aspect to be looked into. Um, so I, I can probably answer that. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, first of all, good morning. My name is Chris Hadfield. So I'm temporary area manager for. Um, Risk reduction. Mm -hmm. So um, I was asked to come here today uh, for dairy. So I've done a bit of a deep dive on these red actions. And if I was to reissue those today, they would be Amber's. Um, having spoken to um, Mel Evans, who's currently on the sick, but I managed to speak to her yesterday. Uh, we are a much healthier place than this describes currently. Mm -hmm. So it does give a further update on next meeting. The other part is on the red flag, sorry, coming there, is the um, on page 77, you've got the assurance review, um, the HR management rosters. I mean, the wording on it, this is ongoing, discussing the possibility of recording. Is no firm decision on that? Is there any particular reason why there's no firm decision? The possibility says me they may or may not. I, league, isn't it? I would I would hazard a guess, Chair, that obviously the, the person completing the, the action there, Zoe Davis, is, is probably discussing the possibility with her chain of yeah. command. So she's probably not in a position to, to take, yeah. actually take the decision. Yeah. So she's probably making suggestions, recommendations to, to her managers who will then be in a position to, to implement that decision. Yeah, but to us looking at that, it looks as though there's no formal decision be decided. It just it could be talking, it could be talking for months and no action to be taken. So, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. it's good in that respect that you know, you've, you've picked up on comments like that because I think very often you know, individuals completing the audit actions on, on the BEMIS system or you know, on, on, on the reports that they feed back to, to Steen's team, yeah. they, they don't necessarily <laughs> recognize the fact that these come before members, yeah. these yeah. come before yeah. members for scrutiny. So. Yeah. So I think it, you know, it's, it's good that the we can also feed that back to us. Yeah. To say, you know, yeah, get a on some of these. If we start an action, you want to see it. Yeah. You know, something's yeah. happening all completed. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. Sorry, Steve, I cut across. I didn't see the laughter. Do you want to come in and say something? Your hands up. Yes, thank you, thank you, Chair. Just a, really, just a couple, a couple of things. Just picking up on kind of all of the the the, the framework things that Wayne spoke about by having on Beamers, um, follow regular follow up, linking into um, business actions and, and risk actions. All of that is. Re I just wanted just to let you know that's all good practice, all good stuff. We don't see that anywhere else in any of our other clients. So that kind of framework is 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 really something to be again okay, supported within the service. Um, so just thought that would be useful for you to know and the other thing then from our side is that we will follow up all the recommendations on an annual basis um to give you assurance of the ones that are closed or a kind of an update on the ones that are still ongoing um to give you that kind of assurance so just those two things really well thanks for that anyway, thank you wayne for that report any other questions before we move on no well just to, to that, that's for us um, to look out for reports and information so Everyone happy to know that? Yeah. That's great, thank you, Matthew. If we then move on to item 10, which is the internal audit progress report, an audit action update, page 81. Well, I think that's the, you know, the reason on that, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, thank you, Matthew. Oh, go ahead, you, yeah. We get uh, two reports from us this time around and, and a progress report. To, uh, most of what I was going to say is highlighted in the, the covering paper, but if I just draw the attention to a couple of things, I think. So um, in terms of the general data protection, so we're looking at kind of two levels. We're looking at the policies and procedures around data protection, but also then enactment of those procedures. So if there's a, a request, a subject act request, for example, then that's following the, the correct process as according to your policies. No major recommendations coming out of the audit other than to tidy up some of the policies you've got, so bring those to um, and the final 
position and also there's a recommendation to have a records management policy that's a a document which kind of describes the roles and responsibilities around data management also including kind of responsibility for keeping records maintenance and disposal of records um so that's general general data protection i'm happy to take any questions at this point on that report anybody got any questions for steve no you're already steve you get away lucky that's, that's just the first one. There's, there's the yeah, other report. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the next report, you've got, yeah, yeah. the next report you've got in your pack is is human resource management and well-being. Clearly, it's a, a key issue across all organisations at the moment. Staff well-being, um, in particular around mental health. The good news is there's no real recommendations so there's a series of policies that are being updated so that there's a recommendation in there to kind of keep that in focus a lot of good work i think what is the kind of the whole story around what we found lots of good work lots of initiatives lots of good practice as well in, in terms of what the the sources uh, the force that the services are taking um i think again just a bit of context the, the feedback we're having from a lot of our organizations particularly other emergency services is that the um the number of staff um taking sickness absence in relation to mental health is on the increase so it's good that you have good practices both um pre preventative and um, reactive in terms of in terms of that um and as i say lots of good practice the, the well-being tag process again is not something we've seen elsewhere with our other clients so that a good thing to note um, again happy to take any questions on on that report would you like to ask any questions? No, I think it's quite uh, clear in the report, Steve, thanks. Yeah, and then the, the final report, report you got in your pack is our progress report. Um, there's a kind of a slight timing issue. I think in our report, there's three reports coming to you. So the ICT uh, security one is going to come to you next time round. I think we, we issued the progress report after that report was, was finalised, but before, after. That the papers were prepared so there's, there's kind of timing issue on that one other than that i think just the um allergies, there's no client briefing notes in terms of fraud on there but we are seeing a number of instances of fraud both personal and within for against organizations due to primarily to the cost of living crisis um cyber continues to be a, an issue as well um and in terms of our own progress, you'll see in, in the report, there's a, there's a lot of lemon yellow audits or, uh, that are ongoing. And we're hoping to bring those to fruition with reports um, before before Christmas now, before the end of the quarter. So again, I'm happy to take any any questions on on that progress report. Hey, anybody else like to ask anybody? No, I think you got away quite easy, Steve. <laughs> Thanks for your report anyway. Um, this is reports for information where the recommendations are members are asked to note the internal audit recommendations and were completed to date on the internal audit annual plan 2022 to 2023. With the whole, all happy with that? That's great, thanks very much. Um, we then move on to item 11, which is a forward work program for the Finance Order and Performance Management Committee. 2022 to 2023, and that's on page 105. I take that, Chair. Yeah, just, just the standard work program that was set out at the start of the municipal year. Um, a lot of the comes off a lot of the agenda items from today's meeting, and then the outstanding uh, areas which we'll cover off in the March meeting. Obviously, it, it is only a plan, so if there's any additional items that we feel as officers need to be added in, in the interim between now and March, obviously, they'd be added to the program. Similarly, if, yeah. if any members think there's any areas that they require reports on, you can uh, by all means add it before that meeting date. So, so any any queries or questions on any, the, any on question on the forward work program? No, I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. You know the the running uh, the the hall of meetings and what what goes into the meetings. Mm -hmm. But you no, know, thanks for that. Um, Item 12, because there's any items have been on the chairperson, the agent. I've got nothing on that on page 111. Um, do we then want to cut the. So, yeah, we move into part two of the meeting now, so yeah. that you can formally 
I'll clear with this part, part one of the meeting and stop the recording at that point.